track record because often what we do is, is really a reflection of us on our hearts and our minds. That's right. And you have a track record of serving a community. And that leads into this, this um, to, to this next question I want to ask you is that, like you talked about listening to the minister and many people don't realize, and I can understand it to a degree because the way that the slant, how this media is, you know, sound bites and all right. this stuff. But you've had the opportunity to hear the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan speak, read his words, him expounding on the teachings of the Most High Elijah Muhammad and more. How has that helped to prepare you to serve as a public official who, of course, you know, you govern, you, you, who, who you govern uh, to improve our community, but also, you know, to effectively serve all, regardless of creed, regardless of color, regardless of their gender, their sexual orientation. So how has being a student of this man helped you to be able to serve all in your position that you are currently in now? Uh, no, man, it, it's, it's the way that it helped me is because it, it, it helped frame and provide context for the time that we're in mm. and, and really knowing, you know, the time and what must be done. It is because of the teachings and because of the way that I've watched the minister over the years. And when I came in and I've heard him say this too, like, you know, different people came, came to him at different times. And when I joined the nation of Islam, it was, you know, two years after uh, we were coming up on the two year anniversary of the million man March. And so mm -hmm. the energy and the, the spirit was atonement, reconciliation and responsibility. And, and so I learned a lot about atonement which helped me to personally deal with, you know, the issues that I was going with, the mistakes that I had made, you know, trying to figure life out as a young man, the people who I had harmed um, and, and just all of the things that I had, you know, going on. And so in that spirit of atonement, those eight steps that were outlined in, you know, the, the Million Man March, like those became things that I started living by. And, and I was so attracted to that message of atonement and reconciliation that that's actually my wedding day. Mm. I got married in October, 1998, you know, because my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife now, we've been together since high school. And so she was with me through all of those things. And so when I joined, I was like, you know, this is it. And she was like, okay, another, here we go again. <laughs> you know, I hadn't been to church. I hadn't been to, you know, like, okay, I was a DJ. Now I'm a drug dealer. Now I'm like, okay, now you, now you a Muslim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but but the, the preparation uh, in in a lot of ways, I, I'll say this, the, the study groups, um, because when I came in, we were in study circles and I was blessed by God's grace to be a study group uh, facilitator. And so being able to facilitate groups and create space for other people to share, being able to connect the dots and be able to weave in, you know, others opinions and views. And connect them to a central you know point or premise uh was definitely instrumental because that's what showed up when we started doing the stop the violence work was being able to assemble groups facilitate the spaces allow different people with different perspectives to be able to share being able to show like how the minister he gave us the mathematical analogy of five plus two four plus three you know six plus one and how sometimes we can be saying the same thing but because we have different fundamental understandings or misunderstandings, we don't see how we're saying it together. And that's been one of the gifts that I was able to, to learn through the Nation of Islam was how to, to see the common thread in all of these things in, the, in each creed, in each class, each color, being able to see the commonality like the bee, you know, and being able to assemble that and make honey out of it. Another thing that helped me was the Millions More movement. Because leading up to the Millions More movement, and um, we started doing the, the uh, it was a, I forget the year, it might have been like 2008, 2001 to 2008, something like, I think it might have been 2008, we can find those times. But it was a programmatic plan of action and an agenda that was set before us as we were moving into the um, Millions More movement. And so when I started uh, my work publicly in public service, I used that agenda as a template basically for the work that we have been doing. And so when I showed up into those spaces, I came with a lot of ideas, but those ideas were from the national agenda that was presented during the Millions More movement. And so I was able to introduce them. And some of them we actually got funded and you know got into uh, implementation 
locally, not on a national level, but like on a local level, we were able to get some of those things implemented because the ideas were good. And we were able to use that blueprint and template to be able to offer solutions to a lot of the problems that we were facing in the community. Mm, beautiful, man. Beautiful, beautiful um, responses. And that that leads me to this. And, you know, I can tell that you, uh, you, you definitely are organizing, you have foresight, and that you sincerely want to serve your your constituents and so my next question i want to ask you regarding your political appointment what have you accomplished thus far and what are you planning in the future uh for your constituents 